12 9 last Thursday, 12 7 tonight. We know we've said as long as you and I have been talking, these Thursday night games, players hate them, coaches hate them. You're just trying to survive as much as anything. Yeah. But somebody's going to win a football game. If you're the commanders, given all you've been dealing with, off the field, the owner talk, all the rest, you get a win. This group of men in the locker room right now, what, what's the emotion in the room among the group? A win is a win, Scott. Like, listen, as much it, it could be ugly, yep. and it was ugly, <laughs> but when you invest a whole week of preparation for mm -hmm. a game mm -hmm. and you go out there and get a win, there's nothing more gratifying. Because I can tell you on the flip side, when you work all week and you have a loss, especially an ugly loss, mm -hmm. Man, you got a whole now you got to wait a whole nother week sure. to redeem yourself. So you'll take it. You've been on great teams, and you were also on teams that weren't. Mm -hmm. And 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 I just I think I think about this a lot, have, having had the opportunity from afar to talk to the guys. They've explained. Look, even if you stink, you're you're in there with your guys. You win a game. I mean, it, I don't know if people get that it matters, but it really matters to to, to get a victory. And and just for as you say for the and you get that mini buy now. I'm not trying to paint a picture in here and tell Washington is supposed to be think they're in the mix. They're not. But right now, it's a hell of a lot better than it was when they flew out there. Oh, there's no question. Like, to, to go into your mini bar with a win, that's, you're feeling a whole lot of hell of a, you know, a whole lot better than mm -hmm. if you would have lost this game. Right. Now you got to stew over it for basically 10 days. All right, so there's, there's not a ton to sell on the happy side. I do want to look at it from the Chicago side where you get down there close, not once, not twice, three times. And they come up short in the end, excruciatingly so. And in the case of Fields, we're watching a guy who doesn't have a ton of weapons to work with on the outside. He's under a heck of a lot of pressure up front from the O-line. And I just wonder objectively, how do the Bears sort of view what they have in this quarterback, given the limitations that the roster currently has? Well, I think that's a good question because this is a Bears team coming into the game that had the fewest passing attempts since any team, I think the Patriots, 1982. Yeah. Like, listen, we're in a passing league. Mm -hmm. I know the game didn't look like we were in a passing league, <laughs> but we are in a passing league. So you have to be able to evaluate your guy. Mm -hmm. And I think Justin Fields is in a situation where he's caught between regimes. Right. And it's not, you know, it's not a fair situation for him, but that it is a situation. Mm -hmm. But I think this Bears coaching staff has to go out there they got to devise this, this passing attack. They got to do something. They got to modernize their offense to bring it to 2022 in I, order to get a true evaluation on this guy. I agree with that. And you know how the show meetings go for all the different shows that you're a part of. And yeah. it was asked in our meeting, not, not that someone was suggesting this, but the question was just asked, well, like at what, pair, at what point do the Bears like pull the plug, go in a different direction? I'm like, and do what? <laughs> I mean, you, you spend this kind of draft capital and equity on this young man who right. is still a very young man who is just – he, I mean, has this many starts under his belt, right? I mean, you're in your second year as a starter in this right. league. At, but at the same time, at, people don't wait. Look what happened with Darnold with the Jets. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. pe people turn in a hurry. I just – it feels like it's on the Bears to surround him with something, as you said, and just give him something to work with because I don't know how he's supposed to pull rabbits out of hats given the current setup. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's why I said he's caught between regimes. Right. You know, this is a situation where the Bears, you know, with, with the new regime coming in, right. they basically stripped this thing down. Right. It's they, GM and coach. It's yeah. like in college sports where it's a new AD. But, like, so, but, I mean, it was only a couple years ago you draft this guy. Like, you're not going to punt on him. No, you're not going to punt on him. But, like, everyone knew that this was going to be kind of a throwaway year for the Chicago Bears considering they had to strip it down. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, my – just watching the passing game, man, it is, it is, it's hard to watch. It's so inept. And I, Scott, I also got to say, I look at the New York football giants and right. what they're doing with the pieces that they have. Right. And it's just like coaching matters in this league. It really does. Coaching is, is, is such a huge thing in the National Football League. Just look at the two organizations. I totally agree with that. Oh, so does the healthy 26. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> and I give Daniel Jones a ton of credit like because yeah. they don't have a ton of weapons outside either. He's playing on a hurt ankle and made a bunch of big plays for them last week. That's a totally different game, but I, I get what you're saying. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.